Pressure make them fall like a crumbling wall. Pressure make them fall like they lost it all. Pressure to these guys, pressure to them all. Apply the pressure, apply the pressure. Pressure make them fall like a Hey, since you're here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Make sure you like the video too. Indiana in the classroom. Shalom, shalom, Israel. Most high Christ bless. How y'all feeling? All praises. Y'all enjoying the uh, feast of unleavened bread. All praises to the most high. I, I was telling my wife, I don't know who this congregation is. I, I've never seen these people before. <laughs> they in here getting it in. You know what I'm saying? It's a new spirit. It's a reviving going on in this joint. All praises to the most high. You know, that come from uh, brothers and sisters faith increases. As your faith increases, you can get up off that wall and dance a little bit. You know what I'm saying? You, you ain't worried about everybody, what they looking at and all that. You just trying to praise the Lord and have a good time. You grateful for being here. So the spirit is increasing. All praises. Give me that in Exodus before we start the class. Exodus chapter 13. Read that for me, please. The book of Exodus chapter 13 and verse 6. Yes, sir. Seven days thou shalt eat unleavened bread, and in the seventh day shall be a feast to the Lord. Listen, so for the next seven days, right, or how many we got left? Five? I think we got about five days left. Let's make sure that we are having our unleavened bread, all right? If you ran through your pan already, dang, I ain't going to tell nobody. I ain't going to tell nobody who I'm talking about, but it's all right. At least you extra enjoying the feast. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I get it. I've been there. You know, your first feast on unleavened bread, you like, dang, this bread good. You ain't thinking about the next four days. <laughs> All praise. We got to uh, um, make sure that we are having unleavened bread every day. And we ain't done partying yet, y'all. The closing is coming up this Sunday at sundown. So make sure you here. Make sure you here. Read. Verse 7. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, uh -huh. and there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee. Neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. So we have to make sure that we keep the leaven out the house. It's very easy to go and buy a bagel in the morning, a donut, grab a quick hot dog, cheeseburger at work. Hey, stay in the spirit. Keep it on the forefront of your mind that for this week, we're not eating no leaven products. You know what I'm saying? Pack you some unleavened bread if you need to. All right, family? Don't get caught. All right, let's get started. Give me John chapter 5 and verse 39. This is going to be the opening scripture right here. John 5 and 39. What are we going over today? We're going over the foundations of a strong congregation. What does a strong congregation look like? We want a strong congregation here in Indianapolis and every other IUIC school that's around the planet. We all want to have strong congregations. We're going to go into some of that today. John chapter 5 and verse 39. The book of John chapter 5 and verse 39. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. So we understand that inside the scriptures, inside the Bible, that's why eternal life lays. So anything that we want to do, any questions that we have, any... Um, Issues that arise, if we want to be structured, ordered, disciplined, the eternal life is right inside the Bible. We ain't got to go far. It ain't hid. Go ahead. And they are they which testify of me. And they all testify of Jesus Christ, the black Messiah. That's what they testify of. From there, give me 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 46. So what are we doing? Israel United in Christ worldwide is a collection of individuals that are now finding out who they are. We all come from various walks of life. We all have various experiences. We all have various professions that we are a part of, various education. Some of our brothers are military men. Some of our men might have did time in prison. You get what I'm saying? We have a wide spectrum. But the commandments of God allow us to come together as a whole. And where does it start? Right here in 1 Kings chapter 8, read verse 46. The book of 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 46. Come on. If they sin against thee, 
For there is no man that sinneth not. So we all have to be under the understanding that we didn't messed up before in our life. I don't think you get here without saying, dang, I messed up. At some point, I lived my life contrary to God. Go ahead. And thou be angry with them. And God was angry with us as the Israelites. Go ahead. And deliver them to the enemy. Read. So that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy, far or near. Go ahead. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves. Somewhere along our walk in our life, the Lord revealed this glorious gospel to us. And it allowed us to bethink ourselves. What does it mean to bethink ourselves? Hold that for me, David. Give me Baruch chapter 2 and verse 30. What does it mean when the Bible says, if they shall bethink themselves? Brother should have pen and paper. You should be writing. You sisters too. Shout out to uh, Bishop Kanai. There ain't no dumb sisters in IUIC. Get your notes. Read that. The book of Baruch chapter 2 and verse 30. Read. For I knew that they would not hear me, because it is a stiff-necked people. Uh -huh. But in the land of their captivities... Right here in America, in Jamaica, in Haiti, in Barbados, all around the world, in the land of our captivities. Go ahead. They shall remember themselves. To bethink yourselves means to remember yourself. Remember who you are. Shout out to the Lion King. They was throwing it in our face this whole time. We ain't know what it really meant. We have to be thinking ourselves. Finish that. Was that it? That was it. All right. Go back to 1 Kings 47. 1 Kings chapter 8 and verse 47. Uh-huh. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were carried captives, and repent, and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captives, saying, What? We have sinned. We have sinned. Go ahead. And have done perversely. Read. We have committed wickedness, and so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, Read. and pray unto thee toward their land. Listen, to pray towards our land, our land is Jerusalem. So many times we get caught up saying face the east when we pray, but what if you're not east? This thing ain't small no more. This ain't just America no more. So you're going to face Jerusalem from whatever. You might be in India. You might be in China. You got to face the West. So we got to be mindful when we say stand up and face the East. It's stand up and face Jerusalem. Y'all got that? All right, come on. And pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the house which I have built for my name. Then hear thou their prayer uh -huh. and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, uh -huh. and maintain their cause. And God is starting to maintain the cause of the Israelites. How do we know that? Because you see an army forming all over the planet. You see his sisters come out of pants and put on skirts. You see in Christian doctrine start to change based off of these men that were considered nothing. And now they're preaching the gospel, and now they got to go back and change the way they've been teaching the Bible for millennia. Go ahead. And forgive thy people that have sinned against thee. Read. And all their transgressions wherein they have transgressed against thee. And do what? And give them compassion before them who carried them captive. The Lord is starting to have compassion on Israel before our enemies. He's starting to give us a level of boldness in this truth. Go ahead. That they may have compassion on them. Read. For they be thy people. For we are God's people. Go ahead. And thine inheritance. Uh-huh. Which thou brought us forth out of, the, out of Egypt. Listen. And that's, that's why I wanted to read all the way down. We the people that Moses crossed the Red Sea with. That was us. And we have to be, be prideful in the fact that we God's chosen people. You don't see no other, talk to somebody that's from Japan, the level of pride that Ammon has on them. We the only ones they want to tuck tail about being the Israelites. Everybody else says, I'm Polish, I'm Greek, I'm Irish. They real happy about theirs, but we ain't supposed to be happy with the Israelites. We are God's heritage. His inheritance is us. Finish that. From the midst of the furnace of iron. Uh, Judges 5 and 11. That's talking about slavery. From the midst of slavery. Get the book of Judges chapter 5 and verse 11. Read that. The 
The book of Judges, chapter 5 and verse 11. Go ahead. They that are delivered from the noise of archers and the places of drawing water. The places, when you draw water, you are a slave. You are in servitude. The places of drawing water is the exact same thing that we just read, the land of our enemies, the place where they were carried captive. There, go ahead. There shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. That's what we are all coming together for. We're rehearsing God's righteous acts. When we keep the Passover, when we keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread, we're going through the dress rehearsal right now because we got to get it right when the time comes and we're sitting in the wilderness. We have to get it right. So we rehearse. We love our neighbor as we love ourselves. We love our God. We take the Sabbaths off that we can get. Everything that God said, we rehearse it and do it to the best of our abilities. Where? Right here in the land we will carry captives. Drop that. Give me Luke chapter 3 and verse 8. I don't want to keep y'all here all night. We got a lot to go through. The book of Luke chapter 3 and verse 8. I'm sorry. Give me Ezekiel 11, 16 first, and then we'll get Luke. I skipped it. Luke chapter 11, verse 16. Where are these righteous acts going to be rehearsed? This is important because we all sit in the same building. I mean, we have to understand that this building, whether 100 square feet or 20,000 square feet, is where the Lord is reassembling his people. Go ahead. The book of Ezekiel chapter 11 and verse 16. Therefore say, thus saith the Lord God, uh -huh. although I have cast them far off among the heathen. Although he made us go into slavery, although he punished us, he judged us. Go ahead. And although I have scattered them among the countries, uh -huh. yet will I be to them as a little sanctuary. That's what this is. The Lord promised us that he would give us little sanctuaries. Go ahead. In the countries where they shall come. In every country under the planet. It's, this building is vital to the rejuvenation of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Don't look at it like it's something insignificant. Is that it on that? That's it. Give me uh, 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 17. So we're going to go into that little sanctuary. What does these little sanctuaries look like? How do they make the most out of the building or the structure that they're actually in to try to grow a nation? Here's where it starts. Give me my first set of pictures, 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 17. Come on, reader. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy Put of... Put my pictures up. Read it again. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor. Uh-huh. Especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. Listen, the scriptures say that elders would be set up that rule well, that labor both in word and in doctrine. When you read the Bible, hold that. Give me uh, Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 27. No, put the pictures back up. They don't need to see me right now. Give me Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 27. Elders that rule well. Go ahead. The book of Nehemiah. Chapter 9 and verse 27. Go ahead. Therefore, thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemies, who vexed them. Uh-huh. And in the time of their trouble, when they cried unto thee, Read. thou heardest them from heaven, and according to thy manifold mercy. Listen, the reason why we can say that we have Bishop Nathaniel, Bishop Yawasa, Bishop Kanai, our deacons, our captains, that's because of the Lord manifold mercy. He said, you deliver them to the hand of their uh, enemies. And because of thy manifold mercies, go ahead. Thou gavest them saviors. They gave us saviors. He always sent men down to get the nation back in order. Go ahead. Who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. And that's what's happening right now before our eyes. We're being saved out of the hand of our enemies. From there, give me Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 17. We're going over what these sanctuaries are looking like. The first thing you need in a sanctuary is strong leadership. Men that love the Lord that will not compromise God. Men that have integrity. You think about how many people hop from church to church to church to church because the men that they have over them have no integrity. 
and figure out that the pastor's sleeping with this dude, this one doing this, this one doing that. We're talking about a leadership that will judge themselves among themselves. Keep themselves in check and order. These are men that a man can follow. Hebrews 13, 17. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 17. Obey them that have the rule over you. Uh -huh. And submit yourselves, for they watch for your soul. Everything that they're doing to rejuvenate and revive the nation of Israel is watching for your individual soul. The scriptures say any man that sin amongst God, he wrongeth his own soul. It's a privilege to have men that say, no, when you do your fringes, the border of blue goes on top of the fringe, all the way around. We don't wear them little teat seats. Why? Because you sinning against God. You need instructions, directions. Go ahead. As they that must give account, uh -huh. that they may do it with joy and not with grief. Listen, that they may do it with joy and not with grief. It's grief when the leadership got to say, man, sister fornicated X, Y, and Z. I think that they think we have joy. You got to stand a brother up, put him out the congregation, stand a sister up. put. Him. I think they think we go in the back and high five each other. No, that's grievous. We building something bigger than ourselves. Who want to go and just judge, 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 judge? We will judge. We have to judge. But don't nobody get satisfaction out of seeing a brother or sister go back in the world, them fall off. Them here marriage class after marriage class after marriage class and still do something they ain't got no business doing. That don't give us joy. Go ahead. For that is unprofitable for you. Because it's unprofitable for us. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6. Read verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6 and verse 1. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 6 and verse 1. Hear therefore, O ye kings, and understand. What? Learn ye that be judges of the, of the earth. Read. Give ear ye that rule the people. Give ear ye that rule the people. Go ahead. And glory in the multitude of nations. Verse 3. For power is given you of the Lord. Who gave him the power? Of the Lord. The Lord sets up everybody, y'all. That's what you got to understand. Your walk going to be that much easier when you realize that God putting the, putting the puzzle pieces together. That the Lord setting the chessboard how he want to set the chessboard. Go ahead. And sovereignty from the highest. Uh-huh. Who shall try your works and search out your counsel. And all of us that are in any leadership position is held accountable for our works and our counsel. The Lord ain't just going to allow somebody to be over his heritage and they judge in Rome, they counsel in Rome, they destroy in men's lives. That's why the scriptures say not a novice. You can learn precepts, but sooner or later you're going to have to talk to somebody about their marriage. Now what? Sooner or later you're going to have to talk to somebody about their kids who don't believe and they got to go to their daddy and their daddy paying child support. You're going to have to go through people's lives and have to give counsel to people. Now what? How do you execute counsel and all you know is the baptism precepts? Everybody think that they could just sit there and just start a congregation, start a class, until you start destroying lives. Then what? From there. So our leadership appoint men to carry out the orders, the direction inside these little sanctuaries. Our job is to set order. Our job is to ensure that the, the sanctuaries are to the standards that's set by the bishops and the deacons, by the captains, by the elders that established this. Give me Exodus chapter 18 and 21. Why? Because Bishop Nathan, you can't be everywhere at the same time. Bishop Yawasop can't be everywhere at the same time. The captains are not going to be able to be in every single school. Not yet. There will be a day. Exodus 18, 21. The book of Exodus, chapter 18, and verse 21. Come on. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, uh -huh. such as fear God. So in these little sanctuaries, they're going to be being supervised, managed by able men that fear God. Go ahead. Men of truth. Uh-huh. Hating covetousness. Hating covetousness. So you're not going to, you shouldn't go there and find the leadership is like Creflo Dollar, getting all of the money. Laying with everybody woman. That's covetousness. All in other men's affairs and business. Said no. Go ahead. And, su and place such over them. Uh-huh. To be rulers of thousands. Rulers of thousands. And rulers of hundreds. Rulers of hundreds. Rulers of fifties. 
and rulers of tens. What the bishops and them are setting up is in the Bible. That's the structure and the order. A lot of times we come out of Christianity, we used to minister, reverend, uh, apostle. The apostles walk with Christ. These people ain't walk with Christ. Um, so forth and so on. So when you come in and you hear an officer, captain, or this such and such officer, this officer such and such. I know when I came in, I thought these dudes was police officers, man. I was like, man, all these dudes, cops, I don't know. I ain't know no better. But after a while, you understand that it's the structure and order that's put inside the Bible. Y'all with me? All right, come on. And let them judge the people at all seasons. Read. And it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee. So when the big matters come up, it goes up the chain, just like the Bible say. That's why brother, brothers and sisters get mad all day. My local leadership said X, Y, and Z. Huh? Well, all right. <laughs> all right. Let's find out. Go ahead. But every small matter they shall judge. Uh-huh. So shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. When it says in every small matter shall they judge, some stuff is small. Hey, bro, this brother came in here. Uh... He ain't had no fringes on. All right, officer, pull him to the side, talk to him. Let's make sure he get with the soul team. That's a small matter to judge. The big matter is, well, we found out sister such and such been doing something with brother such and such. Move it up the chain. Here we go. Here we go. Now lives is about to be affected. So everything he has is checks and balances. So Rock chapter 10. Everything has its checks and balances. Everything is necessary. Sirach chapter 10 and verse 1. The book of Sirach chapter 10 and verse 1. A wise judge will instruct his people. Uh huh. And the government of a prudent man is well ordered. So in these little sanctuaries, what you'll see is that they are being placed in order by prudent men that's over it. That's why a good leader is going to pay attention to detail. Hey, why this garbage can over here? Why are we using this as a, as a, as a dump now? Why, do, why is this like this? Who didn't do this? Hey, change the air fresheners in the bathroom. I ain't smell it when I walked in. That prudent is attention to detail. He's able to see everything, even the minute things that some people might seem insignificant. Somebody walk into school, first thing they see is a big old trash can. Wait a minute. That's a bad visual. Move the trash can behind the wall. Move it over to the corner. Move it to the closet. Go ahead. As the judge of the people is himself, uh huh. so are his officers. And you have to understand the congregation, the officers, they start to take on the characteristics of that judge. Now, if we are following the bishop, then we are right. Does that mean all of the brothers and sisters are going to be following that same order? The brothers going to want to talk like Bishop Nathaniel, talk like Bishop Kanai. Talk like Bishop Yawasab. The sister's going to be on Titus 2s. They're going to start to reverence Mother Shamara and some of the other deacons and the uh, uh, bishop's wives. That's going to be what they obtain to. Go ahead. And what manner of man the ruler of the city is, uh -huh. such are all they that dwell therein. Verse 3. An unwise king destroyeth his people. And not using wisdom as we build these little sanctuaries will cause the building to be empty. You'll destroy the people. You'll destroy their hope. Go ahead. But through the prudence of them which are in authority, uh -huh. the city shall be inhabited. And if we, we can learn to be prudent as leaders, the school will be inhabited. The school will be full. The people will be joyous. They'll celebrate. They'll have a good time. So let's give, a, uh, give me Colossians chapter 2. I want verse 1. Let's get one more on this leadership. The book of Colossians. Chapter 2 and verse 1. For I would that ye knew what great conflict I have for you uh -huh. and for them at Laodicea and for as many as have not seen my face in the flesh. So a lot of us have not seen the bishops, the deacons' face in the flesh. Is that it on verse 1? Yes, sir. Jump to verse 5. Verse 5. For though I be absent in the flesh. Though they are not here physically with us. Go ahead. Yet am I with you in the spirit. Uh-huh. Yet the things that they teach, that spirit that that's on the bishops and the deacon, is right here inside this building as well. Go ahead. Joying and beholding your order. Joying and beholding what? Your order. Oh, they want to know that we are in order. 
That is a foundational thing for every IUIC congregation across the board. Is that body in order? Are the, is the leadership prudent? Are they taking care of the people? And in that, you have to set standards inside the body that everybody has to attain to. And you cannot compromise those standards for anybody. It doesn't matter if somebody don't like it, don't like you, don't like the way you said it, don't like the fact that you are unwavering and unmoving on the standard. They, the scriptures say, read it again. Verse 5. Verse 5. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit. Joying and beholding your order. The scriptures say we got to maintain order. It's got to be order amongst us. Go ahead. And the steadfastness of your faith and the in stead, Christ. And the steadfastness of our faith in Christ. Our faith in Christ is based off keeping the commandments, nothing else. If we say we love God, we will execute his commandments and his judgments the way he said to execute them. So let's give a couple examples of the order order that you'll find in these congregations. Give me 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27. One of the things that a strong congregation does is fast and pray. 2 Corinthians 11, 27. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 27. Uh -huh. In weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, uh -huh. in hunger and thirst, Read. in fastings often. In fastings often. We have to make sure that we are in the mind and in the spirit. When these national fasts come up, we fast as well. That the leadership uh, uh, is pushing it to the congregation that we're going to fast as a people. It's important. That's a part of that order. Go ahead. In cold and nakedness. Uh-huh. Beside those things. That's that all I want. Give me Joel 2 and 12. Book of Joel chapter 2 and verse 12. Therefore also now, saith the Lord. Read. Turn ye even to me with all your heart. Turn to God with all your heart. Go ahead. And with fasting and with weeping uh -huh. and with mourning. Listen, so we need to fast and be genuine in our fasting. That's how we turn to the Lord. That's how the Lord will hear us. Finish that. And rend your heart. And not your garments. And change your actions and not just your face, the way you look. We need to fast and make sure our actions are changing with our fast. Otherwise, we just fasting in vain. Finish that. And turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. Because he'll have compassion and mercy on us, y'all. We come into the body, we see people constantly getting sick, constantly getting sick, brothers losing jobs, sisters uh, are in bad situations, we're dealing with health issues. That is the time to be fasting and praying. That's why he said often, because that stuff never going to stop happening in here. You're never going to stop dealing with health issues. You're never going to stop dealing with financial issues. We ain't never going to stop dealing with sin as much as we want to. It's always going to be amongst us somewhere. So we fast and we pray often. Strong marriages. Give me Sirach 25 and 1. It's important that within the body are strong marriages. This is the, the foundations of rebuilding a strong nation. The book of Sirach, chapter 25 and verse 1. Go ahead. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful both before God and men. Read. The unity of brethren. So us brothers being unified, it being no schism amongst us. Go ahead. The love of neighbors. The, everybody has a genuine, uh, unfeigned love for each other. Go ahead. A man and a wife that agree together. Strong marriages where the sisters are actually following the men's lead. Why the men are guided by the men that are above them, by the leadership, by counsel. See, marriage is easy as long as everybody is willing to sit in their role and be good. Marriage class coming soon. 1 Timothy 5.14. We could have got there and just stayed there for a little while up in here. It's coming. 1 First Timothy, Timothy 5.14. 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse 14. I will, therefore, that the younger women marry. That the younger women do what? Marry. Read. Bear children. Bear children. Guide the house. Guide the house. Marry, bear children, guide the house. Go ahead. Give none occasion to the adversary. 
to speak reproachfully. Because sisters be hot in this joint. You give occasion to the adversary to see. Y'all got thoughts just like they got thoughts in the world. They doing hot girl summer in the world. Y'all doing hot girl summer in here with fringes and head wraps. You give occasion for people to speak against what we're trying to build. From there, they give alms and support. Give me Tobit chapter 12 and verse 8. These are basic foundations of a strong congregation. You can't have a strong congregation with bad marriages. You can't have a strong congregation if the people ain't fasting and praying to God. You know what? A person that does not pray is telling God that he doesn't need him in his life. And he can do everything without him. Oh, I got this, God. Yeah, yeah, I'm sick. Yeah, I got this, God. No, you better pray. I want that almighty power that created that eclipse we watched the other day. I want him on my side. Ain't no cheat code. <laughs> you, you get what I'm saying? I want God on my side, good, bad, and ugly. I know he only going to let me get but so far. I know he only going to let me get but so low. But I'd rather have him ride with me than anybody else. Where we at? The book of Tobit, chapter 12 and verse 8. Go ahead. Prayer is good with fasting and alms so, and righteousness. So we got to pray. We got to fast. We got to give alms. That's how we keep the building on, y'all. That's how we are able to have um, a nice feast of unleavened bread, a nice Passover. Lamb was thick on them plates for the Passover. I said, dang. I started watching the videos. The sister was piling bread on John's plate. I said, how many pieces of bread they going to get a brother? About eight pieces. Well, woo, shout out to sister Anya. She was like, boop, 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 boop. Like, dang. And John went back for seconds. You went back for seconds, John? Okay, all praise, all praise. Burn the fat, bro. <laughs> uh, Toby 4 and 7. So we have to give alms, y'all. It's a necessary thing. And that giving alms is a part of your faith, brothers and sisters. Especially coming out of the Christian church, if they didn't did you dirty, it ain't going to take you a little time before you're going to reach in your pocket and get some alms. We understand. But those of us that are strong, we have to supply that need until everybody else's faith catches up. Go ahead. The book of Tobit, chapter 4 and verse 7. Uh -huh. Give alms of thy substance, and when thou givest alms, let not thine eye be envious. Listen, it said, when you give alms, don't be mad when you get in the car. Like, man, I gave that $100. Man, I shouldn't have gave a whole, I should have gave 25 bucks. You know what I'm saying? You know what I can do with that other 75 the Scriptures say, that, don't let your eyes be envious. Go ahead. Neither turn thy face from any poor, uh -huh. and the face of God shall not be turned away from thee. He said, if you give alms and you're not envious, you ain't mad about giving it, then the Lord will be there for you. We're talking about building blocks, the foundations of a strong congregation. This is what we want to be in Indiana, y'all. Strong. Next, counselors. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 14. Every strong congregation need counselors. You need somebody you can talk to to help you with what you're going through. As I tell brothers all the time, hey, bro, you need a counselor. You need that one of a thousand. You need somebody you can speak to. Listen, in order for you to be sitting here, at some point you had to realize you don't make the best decisions for your life. Straight up. Somewhere along my life, I, sisters come in, single sister, four kids, three baby daddies. Don't get no counsel on finding a husband in the truth. She got a type. Well, sis, you ain't learned your type don't work yet. Your type ain't never worked. You're 47. Get some counsel. Let your type go. We need counselors. Read that. Proverbs eleven fourteen. The book of Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 14. Uh -huh. Where no counsel is, the people fall. And that's why you see people, when you start... Uh, seeing people when they have problems, problems and issues arise, and we turn around and say, hey, sis, you got a counselor? No. Well, you telling us about the problem. You should have asked and for counsel way before you made the decision. Now you're asking us to put out forest fires. Y'all know how hard it is to put out a forest fire? They be dropping water out the helicopter and everything. That joint just keep burning until they get tired. We not firefighters. All we, got, all we can do in them situations is judge. Well, you did this. This is what's going to happen. Uh, talk to this sister while you put out. 
when you could have got counsel. Go ahead. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Why? Because different brothers are skilled at different facets. So if you're a brother, you're trying to start a business and you want to be, I don't, you want to be a trucker. Okay, cool. You can talk to me, but I could pass you to a brother that's a trucker. And he could counsel you on that matter. You get what I'm saying? You're a brother, you want to burn the fat. Where's Levi? Like, say, send him to Levi. Let him give him a detox drink that make his eyeballs sweat. <laughs> you want a multitude of talents in the body so that the people can be covered from A to Z. Y'all get what I'm saying? Uh, what we at? That was verse 14. Uh, Proverbs 24 and 6. The book of Proverbs, chapter 24 and verse 6. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war. Uh-huh. And in multitude of counselors there is safety. Listen, sometimes on your job, sometimes dealing with family members, your mother and father, you have to go through a spiritual war with these people. Sometimes it's like, look, man, every time I go to my mama house, she's sucking her teeth and smacking her gums. She's always got something bad to say. What should I do, officer? You ready to go to war with mama, and you live there. Well, sit, mama going to put you out. <laughs> You're going to be homeless, baby. You ain't going to have no way. You can't go to, you better get some counsel, because you go to war with mama in her house. You're going to be homeless. And that's her car. And you just got here three months ago. Ain't nobody better let you come move in their house. They don't know you yet. You might want to be humble around mama. Mama got a lot of power in your life right now. But see, you just went to war anyway. Now we just saw you when we was riding the camp at the bus stop with a suitcase. You need counselors when you're ready to take on those battles that you're ready to take on. Sisters be with men for a multitude of years. They've never worked. They've never done anything. And now their husband won't come in the truth. You about to go to war, sis. You better talk to somebody about that war you about to go in. Um, next one. Talents in the body are utilized. It is important that we all realize that the Lord did not bring you here for no reason, that we all have talents that need to be used, that are going to be used. And it's okay. You don't have to know what your talent is right now, but we all have a talent. The Lord did not bring you here for no reason. Give me that, Matthew 24. I'm sorry, Matthew 25 and 14. The book of Matthew, chapter 25 and verse 14. Let's read through it quick. Go ahead. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country uh -huh. who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And the far country. Give me Acts chapter 8 and verse 1. Real quick. The book of Acts chapter 8 and verse 1. And Saul was consenting unto his death. I'm sorry. 1 and 8 through 11. The book of Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both uh -huh. in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in the white apparel. Read. Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. I just, I wanted to read that whole thing because I love Jesus. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> but it's all of the nations that's under the heaven. Go back to uh, uh, Matthew 25. Book of Matthew chapter 25 and verse 14. Go ahead. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country uh -huh. who called his own servants and delivered them and delivered unto them his goods. So we are the servants and Christ is the one delivering us the goods. Go ahead. And unto one he gave five talents. Some of us have multiple talents that we use. I like to tell brothers especially, I don't really deal with uh, the sisters too much one-on-one uh, -on -one conversations. But nine times out of ten, what you're doing to make money in Esau's world is something that needs to be used to establish uh, 
the, the little sanctuary that you're in to uh, help establish the kingdom of heaven. If Esau will pay you $100,000 to do it, then we probably could use it in here if it's righteous. Go ahead. To another, two. And to another, one. Uh-huh. To every man according to his uh, severability and straightway took his, took his journey. So every man, every sister in here has a talent according to their ability. They several ability. Hold that. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians 12 and 11. Let's see what that several ability is. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 11. But all these worketh that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. It's talking about the diverse talents. We're going to go back to uh, 1 Corinthians 12. Let's finish this up. Matthew chapter 25, verse 16. Uh-huh. When he had received the five talents, went and trade with the same. Yep. And made them other five talents. What you will realize is you can come in with a skill set. It might be a great multitude of skill sets. If you apply that to God, he'll add to your skill sets in this truth. Go ahead. And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained another two. Why? Because he's actually using it. He don't, that, that man or that woman does not have the natural talent that the person with five talents has. However, they're still willing to use what their talents are to move the body forward, to move the nation forward. To move the kingdom forward. Go ahead. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth uh -huh. and hid his Lord's money. This is that brother's, I don't know my talent. I can't do nothing. I don't find where I fit in. Nobody likes me. You just hid your talent. Go ahead. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh. After a dispensation of time of you sitting in here doing nothing, now Christ comes, go ahead. And reckoneth with them. Uh-huh. And so he had, and so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, uh -huh. Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. He said, God, you gave me talents, and when I came in the truth, I used them for your benefit. I use them for the execution of the gospel, to push the word to the four corners of the earth. Go ahead. His Lord said unto him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Uh -huh. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things, and to thou into the joy of thy Lord. He said, come into the kingdom, since you use your talents to help build it. Keep reading. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, Thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. Uh -huh. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Listen, the few things is something simple. That could be something as simple as you the brother pull a garbage can out every Tuesday. But all the rest of the men work during the day. You're the only one off, and the Lord brought you in. You pull that garbage can out. You might think that that's insignificant. But tell me, what happens if that trash can ain't put out? Next Sabbath, we're trying to load garbage up in brothers' cars, take them down the street, because some of you soldiers beat and forgot. It's all right. It's all right. I ain't going to call you by name. But it, it adds another level to the body because... We are not crossing our T's and dotting our I's. Just two talents. Go ahead. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. What you meaning for doing something small and insignificant, you'll get the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, You Lord. don't want to be this person that has one talent. You don't want to be the person sitting in the body saying, I ain't nothing in here I could be doing. High-minded, haughty. Think it not. Just hold that there for now. Go ahead. Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown. Listen to the excuse. He said, God, I knew that you be judging people. I know. I see. I was smart, Lord. I knew I couldn't go out there and mess up that talent that you got, that you gave me. 
because you're a hard man. You reap what you don't sow. What does the Bible mean by that? Christ ain't down here doing flyer missions. He ain't holding camp. He ain't in here setting up these decorations. He ain't baking unleavened bread. He ain't barbecuing on feast days, whipping up rasta pasta. But he going to reap what he didn't sow. We going to do the labor, and Christ going to reap us as a harvest. Go ahead. And gathering where thou hast not strong. Uh-huh. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. I was embarrassed. I was shy. I didn't know what to do. So I just sat on my talent. I didn't use it for the perfecting of the body, for the helping of the little sanctuary. Like we be in here, brothers, sisters, be here four, five, six years, and you find out they can sing. Like, wait a minute. You could have been singing here. Y'all got me singing. I sound like somebody beating a bag of cats. Help me. Go ahead. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. Uh-huh. His Lord answered and said unto him. So he him, just gave him back the talent. Yeah, you gave me one talent, I'm giving it back. Woo, I saved it for you, Lord. I ain't use it down here because I ain't want to lose it down here. So I just saved it. Here go your talent back. Listen to what God said. Go ahead. Thou wicked and slothful servant. He said, nigga, you lazy. Negro, you lazy. You wicked and you lazy. You did you have had this excuse in your mind the whole time. Well, you know what? When he come back, I'm going to say, you know what? I was, I was scared because... Yeah, that's what I'm going to tell him. Christ reading them, you wicked and slothful servant. Go ahead. Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not. You knew I was coming back. Go ahead. And gather where I have not straw. Uh-huh. Thou oughtest, therefore, to have put my money to the exchanger. He said you could have at least used it somewhere. Put it to the exchangers. Go ahead. And then at my coming, I should have received mine own with usury. He said at least I would have got it back with something on top of it. Let's get them exchanges. Give me Luke 19, 23, real quick. What is the exchangers? Luke 19, 23. The book of Luke, chapter 19 and verse 23. Wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming I might have required mine own with usury? You see that? Money in the bank. Go ahead. Go back. 27. Verse Matthew chapter 25, verse 27. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Read. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. He said, take his talent that I gave, that I gave him from him and give it to the person that will actually use it for the building of the kingdom. He said, give it to the person that's got an astounding reputation of using it towards God's kingdom. You see that a lot. And then a brother or sister is still sitting there saying to themselves, well, I could do that better than what they can. Then why you ain't do it? You got brothers that, that'll lead the truth. They edit it. Next thing you know, brothers ain't never edited nothing. Now they editing videos. The Lord going to use the talent. He'll snatch it off of you and give it to somebody else. And they'll do it ten times better than what you did because you ain't never used it. You just sitting here. You think you're going to be a professional student. You think you come here to look cute. We are here building something that is bigger than us. Y'all understand? Read 29. For unto everyone that hath shall be given. So if you have talents, if you have works, when Christ get back, he's going to give you more. Go ahead. And he shall have abundance. Read. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. The little talents you have, God's going to take it. Go ahead. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. No kingdom for you. Luke chapter 3 and verse 8. No kingdom for you. So we're talking about, we talked about praying and fasting. We talked about alms, strong marriage, counseling, using your talent. All of this has to take place in this building that we're turning into God's little sanctuary. Go ahead. The book of Luke, chapter 3 and verse 8. Read. Bring forth, therefore, fruits worthy of repentance. Your job as a repentant man and woman is to bring forth fruits that show that you are repenting. To actually put actions behind your righteousness the same way you put actions behind your wickedness. Brother's like, oh, I got to get up. I can't, I can't make it to the new moon. 
because I got to be at work at 8 in the morning. Well, when you was in the world, you was in the club till 2 in the morning. You still got up and went to work. You had actions behind your wickedness. Now you come in the truth. You can't put no actions behind your righteousness. Let me explain something to brothers and sisters. When you miss high holy days, you wrong your own soul. I'm here. My wife here. My kids here. Everybody I'm responsible for in the building. You lying to your guy. You ain't lying to me. You know you ain't got to be at work until 10. You cutting up out of here at 5 o'clock. Oh, it start too late. It start at 7. Man, please. What time the club started when you was in the world? Straight, you ain't care about having to wait in line. You wasn't going to be the first one in line at the club. Who does that? You wasn't even hitting the line till midnight. You ain't care. It's raining. You still out there, though, buying them $40 expensive drinks in there. You think you buying Ciroc. They didn't put Saveca in a Ciroc bottle. Now, you ain't care back then because you was the good guy. Now, in the truth, all of a sudden, you ain't got time. I'm tired. I'm getting too old for this. Hmm. Read it again. Bring, bring forth, therefore, fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within yourselves, What? We have Abraham to our father. Oh, I'm an Israelite. I know I'm an Israelite. That's good enough. Go ahead. For I say unto you, What? That God is able of these stones. He said he'll take rocks in a field. He'll take stones, go ahead, to raise up children unto Abraham. He'll take the understanding from you. God don't need us. We need God. It's a big difference in the two. All right, so these are a few examples, right? And there's many, many more examples of what a strong congregation, that foundation look like, right? Uh, the pieces that we just named, the praying, the counseling, the the fasting, these things are, are used to be able to bring up a strong congregation. Y'all want to be a strong congregation, right? Yeah, yeah we want to be a congregation that, we can, that, that we're proud. When people, oh, where you from? Yeah, I'm from IUIC, Indiana. Indiana? Man, I be look. You get what I'm saying? Listen, you, we can look at the bigger schools, but they work to get there. They didn't start off like that. And it wasn't just the men that you're familiar with, the captain or the bishop or the deacon that's there. It's women behind the scenes busting they behind. Soldiers and officers, brothers, everybody working collectively together. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We have to fall in order, but we all are different in our own ways. It's okay. The Lord has not made a mistake in bringing you into this body under this leadership right now. There's no mistakes being made. But your faith has to understand that. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to start at verse 4. We're going to read through this. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 4. Uh -huh. Now there are diversities of gifts, uh -huh. but the same spirit. So we all have diversities of gifts or diversities of, of talents, but we're all in the same spirit. What is that spirit? The spirit of Christ. The, the spirit of building up. The 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Go ahead. And there are differences of administrations, uh -huh. but the same Lord. Listen, so there's different ministries inside the body, but the same Christ. Go ahead. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Go ahead. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Listen, your, your portion of the Spirit is given to you to profit the body. That's what God is saying. To profit everybody that's sitting in here. Man, woman, child, ranked man, unranked man. Married, unmarried. Jump down. Verse 12. Verse 12. For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, uh -huh. being many, are one body. Even though as many of us, we still one body. We have one common focus, one main goal. Collectively. Go ahead. So also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Uh-huh. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles. Whether you was born in this truth or you used to be an African American and now you saying you Judah. You used to be a uh, Jamaican and now you saying you Benjamin. It don't matter. Go ahead. Whether we be bond or free. Uh-huh. Whether we be free or whether we in the prisons. It don't matter. Go ahead. 
and have been all made to drink into one spirit. What's that spirit? Hold that. Give me John 6, 63. The book of John chapter 6 and verse 63. Come on. It is the spirit that quickeneth. Uh -huh. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. God's words, this Bible that we search, they are spirit. Go ahead. And they are life. And that is how we live our lives, through the Bible. Now go back. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 12, verse 13. Let's read verse 14. Verse 14. Uh-huh. For the body is not one member, but many. Come on. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? So can your foot say, because I don't grab stuff, I'm not utilized, I'm not a part of the person's body. You ever seen a man without a foot? They give him a sticker, bro. He get all the best parking for the rest of his life. You know what I'm saying? They call it a disability. But some of us, listen, he ain't talking about a physical body. Listen to what God is saying. Go ahead. And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Uh-huh. Is it therefore not of the body? Who would like all eyes and no ears? Nobody. That's a disability. Nobody wants that. Go ahead. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? Uh -huh. If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? Read. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. So all of us are here based on the way that it pleased God. The day you repented, the order in which we walk through the door, your ambition versus the next brother's ambition, and your drive for this truth and that zeal that you got, all that's according to God. It's all according to God. All of it. And you got to be of an understanding mind that God got you here for the right reasons. We don't all have to do the same jobs, brothers and sisters. But the body has to be able to work together. We don't all have the same gift, but we are all necessary. I know often we read this scripture and it's like, man. But I'm only doing X, Y, and Z. I'm only doing this, and I'm only doing that. So let me show you that every single one of these ministries, every single one of these departments in this body is important. Give me the first one. Give me 1 Timothy chapter 4. I want 1 Timothy 4 and 12. Give me my first department. You can drop that uh, disclaimer. All this in-house. No, none of this belong to nobody. So the first thing is study groups. Brothers and sisters need to be able to learn the Bible to study the Bible. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12. Come on. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers. Listen, we have to be an example amongst each other of those that believe. Go ahead. In word. In word. In conversation. Uh-huh. In charity. In spirit. In faith. In purity. Read. Till I come, give attendance to reading. He said, until I come, give attendance to reading. Go ahead. To exhortation. To exhortation. To doctrine. To doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy. So you have some men that have the ability to teach, set up study programs, ask brothers questions, write tests. That's not a small thing if that's your uh, uh, ability or duty within the body. Go ahead. With the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Watch this. Give me Acts 17 and 11. It's just quickly becoming one of my favorite scriptures right here. Acts 17 and 11. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 17 and verse 11. These, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Uh -huh. In that they received the word with all readiness of mind. And searched the scriptures daily. Whether those things were so. Listen, the Bible says that the noble ones in Thessalonica searched the scriptures daily to figure out the Bible. To see whether or not people was lying. To be able to defend the doctrine. What about the sisters? Give me Titus 2. In verse 3. Put it back on the screen. Study. We're talking about studying. It's a privilege to be a part of that ministry. Go ahead. The book of Titus, chapter 2 and verse 3. Come on. The aged women likewise, 
that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. Listen, they, the, the Bible is saying that you age sisters need to be an example first. That behavior, which is holiness, that's you being an example. Why? Because when the people come in, they're going to look at you before they listen to what come out of your mouth. Go ahead. Not false accusers. Uh-huh. Not giving too much wine. Not gossiping and running your mouth. Not overly drinking. Go ahead. Teachers of good things. Teachers of good things. God's commandments are the good things. The women being in order are the good things. Go ahead. That they may teach the young women. The young women. It's not necessarily just your age. When you come in this truth, you become a baby again. You could be 45, 55. You could be 80 years old. It's time to start relearning again. So the senior sisters are set in place to teach the younger sisters. Go ahead. To be sober. How to be sober. Stop smoking. Stop drinking. Go ahead. To love their husbands. A lot of women that are coming in this truth that had marriages don't know how to love their husband. A lot of them is happy wife, happy life type of brothers. Now you coming in this truth and you seeing your husband start to become a man and you're like, I don't recognize this guy no more. I used, he used to make my plate and tell, I used to tell him to be quiet. All I had to do was suck my teeth. He did. Man, he's standing on business now. Ain't this what they say nowadays? Sons, that's what they say? Standing on business? Okay, cool. They standing on business now. I don't recognize them. You Titus two sisters, you senior sisters, y'all got to be the ones to quarrel that, to teach them how to love their husbands. Go ahead. To love their children. Uh-huh. To be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands. Read. Really? That the word of God be not blasphemed. So when we look at these, this ministry when it comes to teaching the Bible, studying the Bible, doing class, the circles that we do, between classes, after classes, the tests that we take, all of these things are important. That is an integral part of the body. Give me the next one, Solomon. Give me Luke 14, 21. Next one, outreach. Maybe you're a part of outreach. Why? Because everybody don't. You have to understand that your role in here is important. Outreach, Luke 14, 21. The book of Luke, chapter 14 and verse 21. Read. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, uh -huh. Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city and bring in hither the poor and the maimed and the halt, and the blind. He said, listen, go out into the straits of the city. That's different avenues that we're trying to touch. We could do youth violence, conflict, resolution seminars, and teach camp. We ain't one-sided. We want to get in front of these pastors, get in front of these community organizers and leaders. Outreach is important. You think your couple letters that you send in every week don't mean nothing. How did we get the radio show then? Everybody's job is important. Your job doesn't have to be somebody else's job. Read the next verse. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. There's still room for more. We got a victory. We want more victories. We want more people coming in. We want more opportunities to spread the gospel. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled. Because we're trying to fill the house of God. We're trying to fill the little sanctuary right here in Indianapolis. Matthew chapter 28. Flash that back up there, officer. 28 and 19. The book of Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Uh-huh baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And you rank men. We can't be afraid to go on no platform and teach among, alongside nobody. We do this. This is our Bible. We studied for this. We took tests for this. We checked each other on this. We spent hours inside this Bible searching the Scriptures. And we're going to take it to every nation on the planet 
Anybody want to smoke with the Israelites in our area, they can come get it. We was born for this, bred for this. Go ahead. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Teaching them that they must keep God's commandments. Go ahead. And lo, I am with you always. And know that God is with us always. Go ahead. Even unto the end of the world. Even when this world ends, God is still going to be with us. We have to have that confidence. Outreach is important. Give me the next one. Give me 1 Samuel chapter 22 and verse 17. Security. Maybe you're a brother that works security. Oh, man, I'm tired of where everybody else be having fun. I be in a room. Security is important. Every ministry in this body is important, especially security. 1 Samuel 22, 17. 1 Samuel chapter 22 and verse 17. And the king said unto the footmen that stood about him, Turn and slay the priests of the Lord, because their hand also was with David. I think y'all missed it. He said to the footmen that was about him, our kings always had security riding with them. Always had security riding with them. Security is necessary. Nehemiah chapter 4. Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 15. The book of Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 15. Uh-huh. And it came to pass when our enemies heard that it was known unto us, and God had brought their counsel to naught, that we returned all of us to the wall, every one unto his work. Listen, our enemies are seeing us build right now. And they grievously mad about us building. They mad Putin, quote unquote, opened the vaults, and now the world see that the true Jews are black. They mad. They putting up billboards around Indianapolis. Open your eyes. You think they just going to let us ride this thing out? No, it's not going to happen, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Verse 16. And it came to pass from that time forth that the half of my servants wrought in the work. So half the people was doing the work. Go ahead. And the other half of them held both the spears, the shields, and the bows, and the habergens. Uh-huh. And the rulers were behind all the house of Judah. Verse 17. They which built it on the wall. Uh-huh. The same men that was doing the work on the wall. Go ahead. And they that bear burdens. Uh-huh. With those that laid it. Every one, every one with one of his hands wrought in the work. One man was working. One of his hands was doing the work. Go ahead. And with the other held, and the other hand held a weapon. Read it again. Read 17 again. Read it right. Come on. Verse 17. They which build it on the wall, and they that bear burdens with those that laid it, every one with, every one, with one of his hands wrought in the work. So one of the hands was doing the work of the Lord. Go ahead. And with the other hand held a weapon. Listen, in the other hand, they were doing security. That's important. It's all through the Bible. So you wonder why you come in here, you get a uh, search, you got pat down, all of that. That's because it's a necessary thing. We have enemies, brothers and sisters. Give me the next one, Officer Solomon. Decorations. Give me 1 Maccabees chapter 4 and 57. We all think or we all have this idea that what we do is insignificant. Ain't nothing we do insignificant. Give me that. 1 Maccabees chapter 4 and verse 57. They decked also the forefront of the temple with crowns of gold uh -huh. and with shields uh -huh. and the gates and the chambers they renewed. Listen, the... Decoration team changes the environment. You change the spirit in this joint. They people come in here and it's looking beautiful. Just like you did when you was in a world where every time something marvelous was happening, what y'all do? You change the decor. You decorate it for the party. You decorate it for the uh, uh, idolatry. You, de you decorate it for the baby shower, for the celebration. Why? Because it puts a spirit on the people. They decorated the temple during this time because we recaptured the temple from our enemies. And we celebrated around those decorations. Get me uh, Haggai chapter 2. I want Haggai 2 and 8. Every department in here is important, brothers and sisters. Thank God that you had that opportunity to bring forth fruits of repentance. Haggai 2 and 8. 
The book of Haggai, chapter 2 and verse 8. Uh-huh. The silver is mine. Uh-huh. And the gold is mine. God said, the silver is mine and the gold is mine. Go ahead. Saith the Lord of hosts. Uh-huh. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former. Listen to what God said. He said, the latter house is going to be greater than the former. We rehearsing the righteous acts. We got to make this house look greater than the Christian church. Greater than any other sanctuary that you have been in. Go ahead. Sayeth the Lord of hosts. And in this place will I give peace, saith the Lord of hosts. And that's people come here for peace. Thank God it's Friday. Man, I couldn't wait to make it to the Sabbath to be around you brothers and sisters. I've been going through hell all week. Said I'm going to make it beautiful and I'm going to get a people that come inside at peace. Thank God for the decorations team. Give me the next one. Give me Genesis chapter 18 and verse 1. The kitchen team. Shout out to uh, Cafe Matter. Genesis 18 and 1. The book of Genesis chapter 18 and verse 1. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre. And he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. Uh huh. And he lifted up his and he lift up his eyes. You and can looked. read through this fairly fast. So let's talk about Abraham and the Lord appearing to him. Go ahead. And lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. Uh huh. And said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away. I pray thee from thy servant. Listen, listen to what he's saying. This is Abraham talking. He said, look, look, my Lord, if I got favor in your sight, don't just walk past me. Stay a little while. Go ahead. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. He said, let me get some water, clean you up, and you can get some rest real quick. Go ahead. And I will fetch a morsel of bread. He said, I'm going to go get a morsel of bread. Go ahead. And comfort ye your hearts. Uh-huh. After that, ye shall pass on, for therefore have ye come to your servant. Uh-huh. And they said, so do. He said, they were like, all right, we'll stick around. Go ahead. As thou hast said. And Abraham hastened into the tent unto Sarah. And, and he said, did what? Into the tent unto Sarah and he said. He ran right to the woman. Right to the sisters. That's in the Bible. Oh, yeah, it's men over the kitchen. We set the order. This is what da-da-da-da-da. Officer Ralph want him to do this, this, that, that. Boom, bam. Give it to the sisters. Let them execute it. That's in the Bible. Read it. And said, make ready quickly three measures of fine meal. Knead it and make cakes. Said, look, we need unleavened bread. Officers doing a class today. Make sure we got bread and wine, sisters. Wasn't face to face. It was on the telegram. It's in the Bible. Go ahead. And make cakes upon the hearth. Uh huh. And Abraham ran unto the herd and fetched a calf, tender and good, and gave it unto a young man. And he hastened to dress it. This is organization. This is a, 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 a feast being prepared and all the moving pieces is working together. That young man, that's y'all barbecue team. You brothers that was out there barbecuing all that land for the Passover so that the people could enjoy themselves. Nobody's insignificant in this body. I pray that you see this after today. Go ahead. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree and they did eat. And people were able to eat. Give me Luke 10 and 38. You don't have to know what your talent is. Get in where you fit in until you figure it out. Don't sit on the sideline doing nothing. Plenty for everybody to do. Come on. The book of Luke chapter 10 and verse 38. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. Uh huh. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving. And came to him and said. Listen, it said, Martha was cumbered about much serving. She was working. She was trying to get all of me and something to eat. Listen to what she said. Lord, does thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Uh-huh. Bid her, therefore, that she help me. Officer, this sister sitting in the congregation. I'm in here doing all this work. Tell her, come help. Make her get up. I got a big 45 plates. Ain't she a 
a part of the kitchen. Tell her get in here. Watch this, y'all. Listen to what he said. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. Uh -huh. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not which shall not be taken away from her. He said, that sister need to be taking notes right now to go and finish doing your work. How what he saying? He said, Mary chose the good part. She need to be sitting here learning this right now. Go on, go on finish cooking in the kitchen. You're going to you're gonna have to do this one without her. She need this message of the Lord. In the Bible, sister's working hard in that kitchen trying to serve the prophets. Give me the next one. Give me Matthew chapter 10 and verse 41. Hospitality team, Matthew 10, 41. The book, the book of Matthew, chapter 10, and verse 41. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet uh -huh. shall receive a prophet's reward. Read. And he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. So when these brothers and sisters are coming to this body and we treat them, and you give them that bag of snacks, you give them that water, Said, you're going to receive a prophet's reward. Go ahead. And whosoever shall give to drink unto one of these little ones a cup of cold water, only in the name of a disciple. Uh huh. Verily I say unto you, he shall in no wise lose his reward. He said, if you just give somebody a cup of water when they walk through the door, you think it's insignificant being on. Oh, all I do is just pass out this little thing every day. The Lord said, you're going to get a reward for that. It's significant, brothers and sisters. Sirach 8 and 8. Book of Sirach, chapter 8 and verse 8. The book of Sirach, chapter 8 and verse 8. Despise not the discourse of the wise, but acquaint thyself with their proverbs. Uh -huh. For of them thou shalt learn instruction. Because we have wise men that come into the body. It said... For of them, you're going to learn instruction. What to do when you leave outside these doors. How to live a profitable life. Go ahead. And how to serve great men with ease. And how to serve great men with ease. How to take care of the men that's taking care of you. That's giving you that counsel and instruction. It's called hospitality. Give me the next one, Solomon. Give me Proverbs 22 and 6. Children's room. Sisters be up in the children's room all day. Gotta get, make sure they get on rotation. Let's put them on rotation. 22 and 6, read that. The book of Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. This is setting the foundation for spirits. To see how happy the kids was to hold up their projects, their paintings for the Passover. That's sit in their spirit that's there forever. Say, train them up in a way that they should. Go, go ahead. And when he is old, he shall not depart from it. That don't mean he or she won't fall off. But they foundation been set since they was young. We used the children's department to do that. To come up with songs so they can sing joyfully unto the Lord at a young age. These kids going to wake up like, they, they really paying $440 for a fake tree? Ain't really paying this much for some twinkling lights to put on the out. Man, this is crazy. Why? Because the children's room are helping the parents to set that foundation. A lot of our kids homeschool. The children's room is a way for them to interact with other kids that's in their same age group. Surely this can't be seen as insignificant within the body. Surely there's a purpose for this. This is one of the ministries of a strong congregation. Give me Sirach chapter 6 and verse 18. The book of Sirach chapter 6 and verse 18. My son, gather instruction from thy youth from, up. From when? Thy youth up. You want to have a next generation? We got to give them instructions from their youth up. Go ahead. So shalt thou find wisdom till thine old age. And then they'll be able to have wisdom as they get older. But it starts from their youth up. Shout out to the brothers and sisters that deal with other people's kids in the children's room. I barely like my kids in the children's room. <laughs> but 
some sisters got that patience. Some brothers got that level of patience where they'll deal with other people's children and be happy and proud when they hear them sing and high five and listen to their corny jokes and they whining because they want a peanut butter cup and it ain't time for lunch yet. It's a special spirit to be able to deal with somebody else's kids and love it and be in the right spirit. Don't see yourself as insignificant. Give me the next one, Solomon. Editing, IT, content creation, Hosea chapter 3 and verse 4. Give me the book of Hosea chapter 3 and verse 4. The book of Hosea. How many of y'all repented from the internet? None of y'all? Wow. I did. It was a video. I was watching the video. I was like, dang. I was like, man, that's, kind of, that's quite compelling. Let me look into it. Then you watch the next one. And the, I said, man, they aggressive, but they ain't lying. <laughs> they ain't lying yet. That little mean, but woo-wee. Them brothers telling the truth. Give me that. The book of Hosea, chapter 3 and verse 4. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, uh -huh. and without a prince, uh -huh. and without a sacrifice, and without an image. You all are changing the way that black people, brown people, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans see themselves. A lot of brothers and sisters are not going to see us teaching out on the street on the corner where they just so happen to be passing by. You are changing the image of the Bible before their eyes. You got AI pictures. You got these shorts. The world say our women is oppressed. Not when our content creation team show them what's going on up in here. They get to see the joyfulness and the gladness that we have as a body. Why? Because we went many days without an image. We ain't been able to see ourselves in no glory as nobody. That stuff has to be captured and put out there. We got to fight against the propaganda that's being pushed against the Israelites, and y'all do it. No way insignificant. Give me Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 2. The book of Isaiah chapter 13 and verse 2. Come on. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Uh -huh. Exalt the voice unto them. Shake the hand that they may go into the gates of the nobles. This is pushing the truth on a digital level that men's boots might not be able to reach. This is what the IT and the content creation team does. When you have somebody in the wee parts of Africa that just got a satellite dish that then discovered that, wait a minute, we the Israelites? We ain't been there yet. We prime countries through content creation. It's a beautiful thing. Give me the next one, Officer Solomon. Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 18. Maintenance department. I could have did a little bit better on the mean, but you know, I was rushing. I was rushing. The maintenance department, Ecclesiastes the book chapter of 10 and 18. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 18. You know, we had sisters. We had a sister. Oh, I, ain't, I can't do no uh, maintenance. I ain't doing no cleaning. Let me explain something. It don't take Judah but one time going to a dirty bathroom. They gonna smile. <laughs> yeah, I had a good time. They ain't coming back. They ain't coming. They not. Judah don't deal with no nasty public bathroom. Y'all got me sitting in here for four hours in the in the. It's been uh, all type of stuff all over the toilet seat. Y'all ain't got nobody cleaning it up. What in the world they got going on here? What they say in the Christian church? Godliness is next to cleanliness or something like that. Cleanliness is next to God. Okay, cool, cool. So when they repent, they're going to come in here with that same mindset. If they dirty, I'm out. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10 and verse 18. Uh -huh. By much slothfulness, the building decayeth. And if we are not on top of taking care of the building, guess what? Everything will end up broke, drop through. That's why when something happened, we own it right away. A kid spills something. All right, let me get that. Brother, go get the mop. Come over here. Clean it up. That's not insignificant. Through much slothfulness, this whole building would be just decaying before our eyes. You need brothers and sisters that maintain this. 
COVID going on, or other sicknesses going on, brothers coming up here doing a deep clean once a month. They wiping down every banner, every poster, every chair covers getting washed, every seat. These are the operations of a strong congregation, y'all. Come on. And through idleness of the hands, the house droppeth through. Haggai chapter 1 and verse 3. The maintenance and upkeep of the building is important. Haggai 1 and 3. The book of Haggai chapter 1 and verse 3. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet saying, mm -hmm. Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses? And this house lie waste? Listen to what he said. You got what you need at your house, but you allowing God's house to just disintegrate before our eyes. It's just going to lay in ruin while you chill at your crib. Read the next verse. Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Consider your ways. What, what verse is that? Verse 5. That's it. That's all I want. Give me uh, the next one, Officer Solomon. The medical team, health and recovery. Give me Sirach 735. The book of Sirach, chapter 7 and verse 35. Be not slow to visit the sick, for that shall make thee to be beloved. Listen to what it says. It says when people get sick and we send a team out, we send sisters or brothers with baskets, we send everybody around, he said that's going to make you Beloved. A lot of people don't got nobody they feel care about them. But when I was in need, my brothers and sisters at my church showed up, at my congregation showed up. We was there for them. It'll make you beloved. Don't never neglect to visit a brother when he's sick. You know, that's a, that'd be people's lowest point of their life. Tell me you, ain't, you don't remember the people that was with you at your lowest. You don't never forget them. You think this health and recovery is insignificant? All I do is somebody gets sick, I just go drop off the basket, you know what I'm saying? No, it's bigger than that. Give me Matthew 25, 42. Y'all officers all right? All right, all praises, all praises. 25, 42. The book of Matthew chapter 25 and verse 42. For I was in hunger. And ye gave me no meat. Uh huh. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Uh huh. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Uh huh. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee an hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you. What verse are you on? Verse 45. Read. Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. Listen to what it's saying. It's saying when people have needs and we don't meet them needs, we get a judgment from God for that. Don't, don't make it seem like if you in that ministry and you in that office, like you ain't doing nothing. You upholding the standard of Christ. That's important, brothers and sisters. Give me the next one. Leviticus 19.32. Elderly care. You're going to have older brothers and sisters that come into the body that we have to take care of, y'all. We got to look out for them. I know they mean. It's all right. It's all right. We're still going to take care of them. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. What you need? Yes, ma'am. We're going to make sure you get taken care of. Read that. The book of Leviticus, chapter 19 and verse 32. Come on. Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head. It said, get up when somebody with age comes around. That's why we rise when the bishops them come in. Because they age men, and it's true. They got 30 plus years of keeping God's commandments. Well, uh, most of us got 30 plus years of wickedness. Go ahead. And honor the face of the old man. Give me Sirach chapter 3 and verse 12. And honor the face of the old man. We got to have special care with our brothers and sisters that are elderly. Sirach chapter 3 and verse 12. 
The book of Sirach, chapter 3, and verse 12. My son, help thy father in his age, uh -huh. and grieve him not as long as he liveth. Yep. And if his understanding fail. And when our people get older, they understand and start to fall. We got to understand that. Can't treat them like their mind is as strong as ours. He said, it's, and when it's understanding fail, go ahead. Have patience with him. Do what? Have patience with him. We got to have patience. Go ahead. And despise him not when thou art in thy full strength. Because you strong right now, now you despise them because they're becoming weaker. Go ahead. For the relieving of thy father shall not be forgotten. For, the, for when we help the elderly among us, it shall not be forgotten. You taking them groceries. You calling them once a day or once a week. If you going and helping them cut their grass, maintain their yards, they got issues with the house, we send brothers over there to try to fix the issues in the house. Read it again. For the relieving of thy father shall not be forgotten. Read the next part. And Read. instead of sins, it shall be added to build thee up. Verse 15. Verse 15. In the day of thine affliction, it shall be remembered. When you start going through your stuff, the fact you helped the elderly, the Lord going to remember that. Go ahead. Thy sins also shall melt away. What? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That sounds like a cheat code. Read that one again. Thy sins also shall melt away. As the ice in the fair warm weather. He said, I'm going to make your sins. All that evil you did because you took care of the elderly, I'm going to wash all that away. Lord! You know, I'm signing up for the elderly care channel after this. I'm signing up. That's, that's got to be my, I got to do that. I need some of that right there. Give me the next one, officer. Give me Genesis 41, 47. The pantry team. Shout out to the pantry team. They be in here giving presentations and things like that. It's not insignificant. The book of Genesis, chapter 41 and verse 47. Uh-huh. And, and in the seven plenteous years, the earth brought forth by handfuls. And he gathered up all the food of the seven years, uh -huh. which were in the land of Egypt, and laid up the food in the cities. The food of the field, which was round about every city, laid he up in the same. All right, jump down to verse, uh, read 49. Verse 49. And Joseph gathered corn as the sand of the sea, very much until he left numbering, for it was without number. Because it was without number. Jump to verse 53. Verse 53. And the seven years of plenteous that was in the land of Egypt were ended. Uh-huh. And the seven years of dearth began to come. So ain't nobody else had no food. Go ahead. According as Joseph had said, and the dearth was in all lands. Uh-huh. But in all the land of Egypt, there was bread. He said, but what Joseph was keeping the food up at, they had bread there. You want to see people get desperate. Let a time come around when they ain't got no food, they ain't got no water. See, we, we look at these offices, and because you're not the head teacher, because you're not the officer of fitness, you think it's insignificant. Give me um, Isaiah 65, 13. But it's very significant. When your number is called, you need to execute it, brothers and sisters. And if you knew, oh, get your spirit right. So that when it's your time to be able to get into one of these ministries, you do it with joyfulness and gladness and give it your full effort. Isaiah 65, 13. The book of Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 13. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, uh -huh. behold, my servants shall eat. He said, we going to be eating. Go ahead. But ye shall be hungry. I said, we going to be eating. Y'all know I'm from Gary, Indiana. <laughs> Woo! But what? But ye shall be hungry. But the world is going to be hungry at that time. Why? Because in all of these strong sanctuaries, you got little Josephs that's executing plans. Powerful. Go ahead. Behold, my servant shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. Give me uh, the next one, Solomon. Give me Ecclesiastes 10 and 19. Finance. Somebody got to deal with the arms when they come in and be a just wise steward over the funds that's coming in and the funds that's going out. Men that fear God and love righteousness, not a dang on Judas Iscariot thief. Go ahead. 
the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10 and verse 19. A feast is made for laughter, and wine maketh merry. Uh huh. But money answereth all things. There are issues that come up where we need finances to be able to take care of them. I wish we could teach three classes and that paid the rent, but it don't work like that. Give me Ezra's one. Ezra in the uh, in the Bible, Old Testament. Ezra chapter one and verse three. The book of Ezra, chapter 1 and verse 3. Who is there among you of all his people? Uh huh. His God be with him. And let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, uh -huh. and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is the God which is in Jerusalem. Read. And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the man of his, of his place help him with silver. He said, everybody else help if you're going to stay back and not come to Jerusalem to build, help with silver. Go ahead. And with gold. And with gold. And with goods. And with beasts. Beside the free will offering for the house of God that is in Jerusalem. So people would give, when they was building the temple, they had to send funds. Maybe you can't make it to physically work on the school, but send funds. Help the brothers that's doing it. Help the men that's leaving their job and coming straight here and working for eight hours and going to sleep for eight hours and going back to work. Help him. Read that. Maccabees chapter 3 and verse 9. And when he was come to Jerusalem, he had courteously received of the high priest of the city. Uh -huh. He told him what intelligence was given of the money and declared wherefore he came and asked if these things were so indeed. Uh -huh. Then the high priest told him that there was such money laid up for the relief of widows and fatherless children. So that we could help each other out during hard times. The money was laid up so that if emergencies arise in individuals' houses, we would be able to give assistance for the relief of widows and fatherless children. We always had the mindset of using money to be able to help those that were in need, not just buy a Bentley or a yacht. There's always a reason why the funds had to be collected. You know why? Because you can't operate in this world without money. It is what it is. When they, we go to sign the lease and say, yeah, we want to rent your building, you think, you think Esau going to give you a building to rent for them and not know that you could pay that rent? Man, what they want now? Three times the rent, three and a half times what the rent is for you to get in this space? How are we going to do that? How the little sanctuary going to be established without a finance department that can navigate this cruel world that we in right now? Is necessary. So we know that there's a lot more departments than what we just went through, but I exhort you all to take thought and effort in the departments that you're in because they are necessary. Now, with all of that in mind, let's go back to 1 Corinthians and read it again. Now you're going to understand what Paul was talking about. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 4. And if I miss your department, I'm sorry. Forgive me. We love your department too. It's a lot more departments. Shoe shine. That's maintenance right there. He maintained the boots right there. Ain't that right, Cornelius? Yes, sir. Hey, you, I tell you what. Now, Indiana got a reputation of having shined up boots. Brothers come in, they, they kind of put their head down a little bit. Everything is necessary. 1 Corinthians 12 and 4. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 4. Now there are diversities of gifts, uh -huh. but the same spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. For the body is not one member, uh -huh. but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Can the kitchen department say, because I'm not decorations, I ain't of the body. I ain't really doing nothing important. No. Go ahead. Is it therefore not of the body? Uh-huh. And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Can security say, because I ain't up there sitting at leadership table, I ain't of the body. Go ahead. Is it therefore not of the body? Uh-huh. 
If the whole body were an eye. If the whole body was leadership, go ahead. Where were the hearing? Uh-huh. If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? Uh-huh. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body, as it hath pleased him. And all of us are in the spots that God wants us to be in. Be grateful. Where you at? It's a blessing. You affecting lives. Right where you at? Go ahead. And if there were all one member, where were the body? Uh-huh. But now are they many members, yet but one body. Read. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. No one person can say to the next, we ain't got no need for you. You ain't doing nothing around here no way. Go ahead. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Uh-huh. Nay, much more those members of the body. Which what? Which seem to be more feeble are necessary. Do y'all see how these departments are necessary? They're necessary, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we, we bestow, bestow more abundant honor. Uh-huh. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together. Read. Having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. So as we see what lack and brothers and sisters are filling those positions, you get honor out of those things. Give me Romans 11. I'm going to skip some of this because we approaching 9 o'clock. Uh, what I say? Romans 11, 11, 13, and 14. The book of Romans chapter 11 and verse 13. For I speak to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, uh -huh. I magnify mine office. He do what? I magnify mine office. We need to get in these offices and magnify them. Make them greater than they were before you entered. Do more. Execute. No excuses. Something need to be done. Raise your hand first. Paul said he magnified his office, which was what? To teach the Gentiles. Read the next verse. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. Because if you can provoke to emulation the other brother, man, officers such and such be going hard in IT. I'm trying to learn how to do that. Soldiers such and such be doing all the means, bro. Teach me. You can provoke people to emulation by the spirit that you're rolling in when you magnify that office. Take some confidence. Take some pride in what you're doing. When you clean the bathrooms, people walk in, they should be like, man, brother, such and such must have just cleaned this because this thing immaculate. You ain't doing it for men. You're doing it for the Lord. And the Lord gave you a gift. Your job is to use that gift, use that talent to be able to further the gospel in your congregation. For us as Indianapolis, for everybody else, it's that little sanctuary that they in. But none of us are insignificant. We got to be that well-oiled machine. Well-oiled machine. Where everything works together. Before we go, I want to show y'all the best gift that we can have and why we come together and why we try to execute as a well-oiled machine. And here's why. Put that up. The best gift is a sinless congregation. That's what we're working towards. Well, fornication, adultery, lying, stealing is not mentioned among us. That's what we want. What well, the marriages are righteous and the brotherhood is strong, and the sisters is listening and supporting the leadership and honoring their husbands. You want to know, if you are single, if you want to know if you're ready for a Lord, do you reverence the leadership that you're in right now? That's going to tell you everything you need to know. Give me Psalms 127 and 1. We're wrapping it up. Book of Psalm, chapter 127 and verse 1. All of the ministries that we just named, right? All of the execution and the securities in the children's room and construction and maintenance and IT and teaching and studying and everything we got. Listen to what God got to say. Go ahead. Except the Lord build the house, 
They labor in vain that build it. We can do all that work unless we are sinless. We're doing it all for no reason. Now, that's heavy because you could be giving your blood, sweat, and tears to this thing. But read it again. Except the Lord build the house. Unless we do it without sin, go ahead. They labor in vain that build it. All our work is for no reason. This is why we must hate sin amongst us. Do all this hard work and then it's nothing because you over here playing around. Body ain't growing. Brother sweating and striving. Why? Because it's sin amongst us. Go ahead. Except the Lord keep the city. The watchman waketh but in vain. Listen, we can see everything that's happening. Can't stop nothing. The Lord got to keep us, y'all. In order to do that, we have to hate unrighteousness. We got to hate sin amongst us. Somebody get put out and they say, hey, we have a no fellowship order to lead them. Don't be the person calling them. We know what we're doing. What the hell makes you think that you above order? We don't send them out of the body for them to be destroyed. We're going to put some, we're going to take care of them. You do your job. Your job is to listen. We said they out the body, cut them off. That's it. That's your only job. Don't be worried about what else we got going on. We'll take it from here. We need them out so they can be ashamed, so that they can repent and come back stronger. But not you. You calling them every day, pacifying them. Girl, I don't know why they put you out. All the stuff you was, you was in four departments, and your kids was here. And I remember you took him a basket when he was sick, and I remember you was the main one that was doing this, and you done did a little thing, and they, what you doing? What you doing? You undermining the sinless congregation that we trying to build. You pacifying sin. Give me Psalms 47, 45 and 7. Book of Psalm, chapter 45 and verse 7. This is our mindset, brothers and sisters. This right here, go ahead. Thou lovest righteousness. We love to keep God's commandments, having a great time during the Passover. Go ahead. And hatest wickedness. I cannot stand Christmas. As a matter of fact, I can't even stand after Thanksgiving. I can't go buy a box of eggs without hearing jingle bells and Rudolphs. They just force it down your throat. Relentless. You go shopping. Happy Easter. Nigga, what made you think I was a... What? You just gonna throw that on me. Just say it. Oh, it's just... It's just... It's just everybody just celebrates that. You did. You, it's because I'm black, ain't it? You just knew. Uh, this Sinegra right here, he, he definitely celebrates. We hate wickedness. Go ahead. Therefore God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. That's why the Lord blessing us above our brothers and sisters that love wickedness. The righteous is more excellent than his neighbor is what the scripture says. From there, Psalms 5 and 5. Psalms chapter 5 and verse 5. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Uh-huh. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. We don't want to be around people talking foolishness. Yeah, 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 man. I just hit the club last night. Whoa, 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 bro. You know where you at? <laughs> Ain't get no joy out of that. Man, we trying to get past that. Don't be putting that back on my spirit. Trying to get me to uh, think I'm missing something out there. Same old stinking thoughts in the club. Now nah, I was in the club when you was in the club. They just look a lot worse. They a lot more ran through. You ain't missing nothing. Same men is still there. They itching a little bit more than what they was itching when you was there. <laughs> Revelation chapter 2 and verse 1. The book of Revelation chapter 2 and verse 1. Read. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith, the, saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. If you jump to uh, verse 1 and 20, you can read who that is. It's talking about Christ. Keep reading. I know thy works and thy labor uh -huh. and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And how we don't want evil people sitting amongst us in the congregation. You sisters should be offended when another sister murmur to you. 
gossip about your leadership. Always got something negative to say about the men that's busting they behind. We supposed to hate evil. When somebody, when somebody come to you with gossiping and murmuring, you supposed to ask yourself in the mirror, why they feel comfortable saying that to me? What is it about my spirit that this woman want to murmur and she came to me to do it? They, she ain't go to nobody else. There's a level of boldness. Same thing when you be having brothers sleeping with sisters. The, when he first started talking to you, you should have asked yourself, what about me made him think that I would sleep with him? Knowing I'm sitting in class listening to all these scriptures, hearing all the counsel, all the backdoor marriage. What about my spirit made me look like I was a goofy? We're supposed to hate that thing. Read it again. I know thy works and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars. And brothers coming through the door acting like they no more than the bishops and the deacons. Ain't keep it commanded one, come here puffed up, exchanging numbers, taking everybody number, trying to get them on study groups and all of that. Ah, you ain't no apostle, bro. Sit down. Learn. We're here to execute. We hate that thing. We got structure, order, and discipline already in place. Come fall in line. Give me 1 Corinthians 6 and 3. And why must we hate it? Why must we be that sinless congregation? Because our brothers and sisters have hope. When they see us, they hope that we actually are doing the things that we're talking about doing. It takes time. For people to come in here and trust us. Say, wow, they really don't be stealing. They really don't be laying with each other's wives. It takes time for them to learn that. Watch this. 1 Corinthians 6 and 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 3. Giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. Because when we do these things and people getting put out and all of that, they blame the Israelites as a whole. They saw that person with fringes on, and they saw them talking about Christ is black and all of that, and then they see them in the club. They think we all like that. They think we all liars, and we all murmurers and gossipers, and we all sitting in here doing no. all. They doing it on their own fruition, and when we find it, they getting the hell up out of here. Why? Because we hate wickedness. We hate sin amongst us. Not that they can't get it right, but you can't clear that lifestyle and stay here. We all trying to get the kingdom of heaven. We all trying to get our minds right. Let's wrap it up. Give me 1 Peter chapter 4. Last scriptures, last scriptures. Start at verse 7. The book of 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Uh-huh. Be ye therefore sober. And watch unto prayer. We got to realize we living in the last days, brothers and sisters. We got to realize we at the feet, the ten toes of this thing. And the 12 tribes of Israel is waking up. We just had a worldwide Passover. Do y'all understand what's happening before your eyes? Ezekiel 37, we in the last verses of that joint. The Israelites is waking up. Rulership is on its way. Go ahead. And above all things, have fervent charity among yourselves. One of the things we must have is fervent charity amongst ourselves. We have to love on each other. How many people left mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, wives and husbands to be in here? We're going to fill that void and have charity amongst each other. How do we do it? Through the ministries that set in place, through the orders that the bishop did set up in these uh, different congregations. It's a beautiful thing to be a part of, an organized nation. Go ahead. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. Go ahead. Use hospitality one to another. Hold that. Get Philippians chapter 2 and verse 1. Philippians 2 and 1. The book of Philippians chapter 2 and verse 1. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ... If any comfort of love, uh -huh. if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, 
Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded. That we are all like-minded. We all have the same intentions. No ulterior motives. Go ahead. Having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Uh-huh. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory. Sis, don't be baking bread because you want your bread to be standing out from the other sister's bread. Don't do a job in this building because you want to get a, a level of recognition or you want to smite somebody else or spite somebody. Let nothing be done through strife and vainglory. Go ahead. But in lowliness of mind. In repentance. And I'm doing this because I'm trying to bring forth fruits worthy of repentance. I know what I was, and I know I'm trying to get the kingdom. Lowliness of mind. Humility. Go ahead. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Oh, read that again. Let each esteem other better than themselves. If you did that, it wouldn't be no murmuring. It wouldn't be no gossiping. You can't gossip against somebody that you esteem higher than yourself. Go ahead. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. That's like the kitchen staff. You know we got all these people in here. They're going to be hungry after the Sabbath. You could easily leave, go get you a quick bite to eat, call it a day. But we got to look on the things of others. Yeah, you didn't. You wasn't the one that uh, messed up the toilet seat in the men's restroom. But somebody got to come in there and use that bathroom now. Now what? If we have this mindset, we'll flourish, y'all. We'll be all right. Go ahead. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Because Christ didn't look upon his own thing. He looked at ours, and he changed his life. He, cha he gave his life so that we could have life because he did no sin. But he looked at us and was like, I got to do this if I'm going to redeem them back to the Father. We got to have that same mindset. Go back. Peter's 4. Almost done. Verse 9. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 9. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. So we need to be there for each other and not have a grudge about doing it. You don't want to help nobody. Just please don't help them. Don't do it and then hold it over their head. That's, that is some worldly stuff right there. Go ahead. As every man hath received the gift, uh -huh. even so minister the same one to another. Read. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So the same way you receive the gift, get a gift to everybody else. Go ahead. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. Read. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth. That God in all things may be glorified. That whatever ministry we in, the most high God is glorified. When they eat that jerk chicken egg roll, we like, thank you, Lord, that thing tastes good. When they can come in and the school is clean and decorated nice, they thank God that the way this building look. The grass is cut. And people can park and sisters can go to their car after a long day and know that a man is walking them to their car and they can be safe. They glorify God. Go ahead. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. to, whom we, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And with that, we say shalom. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you.